Anyway, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless Him kidneys, bless Him lungs, bless Him brain, bless Him eyes. The temple of the living God, blessing the Lord. Uh, we thought we'd start out with this Philippians 3.10, that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection. That I may know Him and the power that know is like Adam knew Eve or Abraham knew Sarah to know to know him in, in spiritual intercourse become one with him communion that's what communion is becoming one and that we already have become one but we don't understand it. so I mean so if you don't understand it and you don't know then you're not really even though you are it's like having a million dollars but you lost the bank book and you and you lost the checkbook and you can't remember where the bank was at you still got the million dollars but you just don't remember what happened to it and and that's the way basically I see what's happened to the whole Adamic race we're not even that anymore I don't think we ever were and, and Christ set us free or, or I really think he came to awaken us to that we already are part of God that we came from God that in him we live and move and have our being and God is spirit so if we're in him then we're spirit but to know him and the power of his resurrection, you know that. And one guy said one time, you know, Paul was like 20 years in the ministry, or whatever at that time, and he's asking to know him. So it must be on a higher, deeper level than he was at. You know, so I mean, so he did see that there was that to know him, to really intimately know him, and not just read a book about him or speak about him like he's not in the room you know when when he really is he's in you and you're in him and we're all in the father and to, to know him that we need to come into that where we can understand that we have all wisdom and knowledge in Christ Jesus in us and that we come to learn things from the tabernacle which we are in here and not out here from somebody else that's got a, a whatever we think is is a competent way of speaking the vernacular. Well, like you said, you can't even imagine when you take that word spiritual intercourse. I'm, it's totally different than how the world would put that into a sentence. There's no uh, lust or anything in it like that. I mean, to know God, like that spiritual intercourse, I mean, that's a love, and that's like God's love. It's a, it's the thing that God moves on, His, His love. And the way He loves us is so fantastic that He don't see the wrongs. He don't see the troubles and in, in, in things that go on, the woes and the tribulations and the suffering. He doesn't look at it like that. I mean, that's how the world ends up getting that. You know, everything's about how they hate something, how they dislike something, what they're doing, uh, how the world is going. You watch news. News now is a kind of like coming into a conflict with the United States and Korea. And, and it's bad. People, people do things. That's not the spiritual intercourse that we're talking of. We're talking of the spiritual intercourse. You and God. Me and God. Don and God. It's, it's, it's phenomenal if we can if we bring ourselves to that level and love God in that way with all we are and all He is. And like Don said, we are spirit. God is spirit. And we must worship Him in spirit. And in that sentence, as we worship Him, then everything that we have need of and know of or want of, God shows us, leads us, guides us, directs us. And, and that's what's phenomenal. If we could only have you who watch this video today look up those words and then put the love in it. 
not the lust, put the love in it because it's always love with God. That's what, you know, the Hudson Taylor was the name of the, he was the first missionary to China, if I remember right. And he, that's the first time I heard spiritual intercourse was a union and communion was the name of the book written in like the late 1800s, early 19. And he spent years and he didn't get anybody born again in China. And he finally started growing his hair long and started doing the, the big braid in the back like they, they used to do a long time ago, the Chinese. And, and he started wearing their clothes and their shoes. And he had, you know, revival broke out. But, you know, and Paul says to be all things to all men. But if we don't judge people. You know, Jesus said, judge not. And we're judging people because they don't look at, because of thinking about things that the only true thing you know is in here. Everybody has an opinion, but they don't, they're looking at it from their point of view, and God made you to, you know, to be an extension of Him, that He's need to come into that where we, where we know Him intimately. We, you know, intercourse is basically, a lot of people, you know, unclean nowadays, we think about it, and when I first read that in that book, this was back in the 90s, that I, that I went, you know, I never looked at it from that point of view, and, uh, and, we, we need to come into an experience that we are one with God. We're one with God and, and, and more than we even know that he, we have the mind of Christ. It says we're not trying to get this. We already have it. And that's another thing. We're not trying. We're not, we're not trying to improve. You can't improve on perfection. God is perfect and that's all he sees is good. All he sees is perfect. So he made us perfectly somewhere along the line. I mean, it says that Lucifer was perfect until iniquity was found in him. That, that scripture always got me. It's like, how was somebody perfect until iniquity was, iniquity was found in him? And, and it's like, I think we started thinking wrong. We started, it was like in the garden. And, and when God said, where are you? And, and he knew, he knows everything. So that was a redundant question. And, and, and Adam said, I'm over here. I'm hiding. I'm afraid. And then God said, who told you you were naked? And so did he lose? Was he covered with the glory and the glory dissipated or whatever? Or he thought it dissipated? I don't think it, I don't even think it did. I think he just thought it did because he'd done something. You know, we've talked about it before that, that, that they didn't even go after the tree of life. They went after the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And I think mankind chose intellect over spiritual and says to walk in the spirit. I just quoted him that scripture in, in, in uh, where's it at? Zechariah 4.6. Not by power, not by mouth, but by my spirit, says the Lord. So, I mean, so if it's by my spirit, I'm supposed to walk in the spirit. And we've talked about it before that nobody knows, even us, how to walk in the spirit. They'll give you a line, but they're not walking in the spirit. I mean, we, you have your moments when things are really moving and grooving in the spirit. But on a steady basis, because we still think we're human and we think that we're separate from God. And we're not separate from God. We're, you know, and with intercourse, you separate this, this one's a permanent intercourse, a permanent union and communion, like Hudson Taylor said. You know, I, look, we've been reading the old guys, and it's like these guys from around the turn of the century and before, you know, they got a better outlook on things than these people today. These people today are all falling into prosperity, and they're just, you know, you, 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 you got to do this. No, you don't. Hebrews 4, enter into his rest. If there wasn't a rest, I wouldn't tell you there was a rest, is what it says. So enter into his rest, and you sit there and you... You listen to the still small voice and you hear then understand the things of God from your perspective. The book of Don, the book of Judy, the book of whoever's out there. And and it's like that what you need to hear. And we've been taught, you know, all your life. You've been told that you're ugly and your mama dresses you funny and you're no good. You can't do that. You're you're I've always said, you know, you're covering outside the lines. You're I can't even tell you where a few of those are, let alone quote them to you. Peace. Peace on earth, goodwill to men. On earth as it is in heaven. I pray that kingdom come, that will be done. we got to believe that it did. The day of Pentecost fully came. He poured out His Spirit on all flesh. It's like the, the first time Jesus came, all what He did, He made us a new creation in Christ Jesus. And we're still waiting for Him to come back before we do anything. Because we can't do anything right now because it hasn't been the rapture. It hasn't been the second coming and we haven't died. Well, how can we do anything? My God. And nobody knows what to do because we got to know. The only way to know is to be intimate 
with the creator of everything because you're part of him. You never were separate from him. That's why I always tell you, he will never leave you nor forsake you. Well, no poop, Sherlock. You know what I mean? It's because you're part of him. Like I said before, my hand, my foot's not going anywhere without me. So you're not going anywhere without God, no matter how bad you get. If God is everywhere, omnipresent, that means he's even in the bad places, whatever bad place you want to think about. He's even there. So, come on. Let's, us too, let's all be still. We'll just sit here for another five minutes, be still. Oh, I lied. <laughs> how boring would that be? I'm not too boring if he starts talking. <laughs> Especially if you're getting that, um, that illumination, that understanding, because you're being still and listening and not projecting your issues your thoughts, your wants, your desires, but what the Master's desires have already been created for us. And as he said, it's a spiritual intercourse. I mean, as you receive that, how awesome is that? You know, I, I got a couple verses here. It seems like a good time to bring those up. And I was looking at these. In Christ, or Jesus Christ, had said this, but the first scripture is out of John 3, 7, the Amplified Version. And Christ had said this. It says, Do not be surprised that I have told you, and this is Christ telling, Do not be surprised that I have told you, you must be born again, reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, sanctified. And again, you must be born again until this word that we just spoke it to you, the Bible is written in the Bible to bring you an understanding. It says, until you, each individual, you, until this word is spiritually heard and spiritually understood, farther enlightenment, cannot be experienced. Identified as a man or a personal mind, one is blind to the truth that since God is the only being, there can be no man, being, or mind. So you have to hear it spiritually. In the Bible, quotes, spiritual ears have to be able to spiritually hear. What the Word is, the Word is the understanding, is the teaching, is the illumination, is the revelation. That's what you have to get. Don had said that, you know, where is Christ? Christ is in us. You don't have to look farther than that. You don't have to go to town hall. You look inside. Where's the temple? Where do you think God would be? He would be inside of you in the temple where you are to hear, where, where you get the revelation. And then there's another verse that kind of fits in with it. It's Matthew 6, 24. You cannot serve God, in parenthesis, the one, and mammon, in parenthesis, a second. Okay, no one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon, parenthesis, money, possessions, fame, status, or whatever is valued more than the Lord. So he's telling us, you need to be born again because you have not the understanding so, because you have not the understanding, you have not realized that you were created perfectly. Don quoted perfectly means there's no adjustments, there's nothing needed. You cannot tune up or add something to that which is perfect. God has made us perfect as God is perfect. And we must realize that we need to know that that's the mind that we should have and walk in God's mind, not our mind, that causes conflicts. Not man's mind. No. Not man's mind, because that causes conflict. And it's not the truth. It's not reliable. Or reality. You know what I mean? It makes up, you know, beliefs. We always taught belief, you know, 
when you just take it a step past belief and come into knowing it, in reality is something you know. Reality is is real. Uh, belief is just you're hoping it's real. You know, I mean, uh, faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So, but you're knowing, you know in your heart when you haven't even seen it that it that it is. But then experience, I think you can experience these things spiritually from coming inside, from being still and knowing that I am God. You know, I mean, some of the stuff that we, how about you? You know, everybody used to know their own, and now they're finding out to go back to the ways uh, for healing and for food and for, for you know, how to, to do things uh, naturally. You know, organic, used to food, everything was organic. Now they charge you more for organic. Organic means they didn't put anything on it, but, you know, I mean, it, it, it's because they chose the wrong way. If they chose peace, if Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace and He's within you, I don't think we're listening really close, but, but to come to come into this, the, the knowing of who we are, that, you know, all in Adam, as Adam, shall die, and all in Christ shall be made alive. You know, so, and we believe we die. Now, can we live forever? Nobody even thinks about that. I asked a few weeks ago or whatever it was about the, the loaves and the fishes. Can you do a miracle and feed 20,000 people? You know, I mean, immediately people answer, no, they don't even think about it. But we're supposed to do the works that Christ did in greater works. Can we live forever? Jesus said some of those standing here will be alive. Did he say forever? I think he said forever. And, you know, uh, this is right off the what we're saying, we don't sit here and, you know, a lot of preachers stand in front of the mayor and do their sermons for three or four days before they give their sermon. That's probably why they speak a lot better than we do. But, you know, we just come here and give you what's coming down the pike right now. Because now, faith is. Glory! Somebody tell me something. Amen. Faith, faith is. And, <laughs> and it has evidence. And he just gave you the scripture out of, out of Hebrew 11, um, 4 or 11, 1 through 4. But faith is, and there is evidence on the faith. But, you know, can you live forever? How long does the spirit live? You are eternal. Spirit. See, your eternal is what the Bible says. Your spirit and your eternal. Now, that's what's going to live forever. That's what the unseen realm really is, because the natural realm that you see out of your natural eyes is basically temporal. It's going to change and go away. But as he, as he was saying that, it gets exciting about the move of God and what God is doing. And, and since we are spirit and we're instructed that God says spirit is the only thing that's real and never going to go away. So we get a different look because we're not used, not going in the temple and we're not getting illuminated. We're not spending time in the temple enough to get the revelation and, and get the truth and apply that revelation and illumination to what's going on in our world because the word can change our world as we speak it out because God said there is life or death choose you this day life or death so we can speak life he said he was talking about you know, uh, 30, 60, 90, 120 years. The Bible talks about that. It gives us a watermark. It gives us a word that it even says in Job that our teeth were created to last 120 years. So eternal means forever. So if your teeth can last for 120 years and we can apply that forever to it, that's much longer than 120 years. So that's exciting how God created us perfectly. He created a perfect world and put us in it. So why can't we grab that truth? Why can't we pick that unclean truth up is what it is. It's, it's got to be claimed by us. So. We need to grab hold of some of this that we're bringing, sharing with you today and say, wow, you know, these guys really are telling the truth. I've never seen it nor heard it that way. I never knew that I was created to be, I was created perfect. And you can't add anything to that which is perfect. God is perfect. You're not going to add anything to God. Oh, man.
Amen. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. That's the one I started out with today. And forget not all His benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your new, your, your so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. He fills your mouth, who satisfies, who fills your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. He's, we're not about living forever. Your youth is renewed like the eagles. Do you believe that? That he fills your mouth with good things? Or do you believe, but we're changing all that on earth it is in heaven. And we're just, we want to speak peace over North Korea. We want to speak peace. We want to bless. And we want to speak for a, a illumination in him to rise up where he sees that he has been made of God and that he needs to turn himself around and you know whatever he needs I just pray blessings upon him that we we got to quit bad mouthing everybody we speak peace over the situation this, this don't turn out good anyway we win and you don't win and and so we want to stop this on earth as it is in heaven we thank you father God there's no wars in heaven there's no anger in heaven there's no strife in heaven we thank you, Father God, for this to be, we don't have this here. And, you know, it says whatever you bind on earth should be bound in heaven. It's already been bound in heaven, is what the original, somebody said, says. And so it's already been stopped. So we stop this. We just speak peace on earth, goodwill towards men. The Prince of Peace is within us, and we declare peace over this situation. But do you believe that he fills your mouth with good things and that he renews your youth like the eagles. One guy said the eagles lose their feathers and they get new ones. So I don't know whether, you know, that was somebody's thought, whether that's 100% right or not. I don't know. But, you know, do you believe he renews? You know, you know you're, you're, you're no good anymore after about, you know, people start falling apart at 40. You know, I, I, you know I'm 68 and he's over 70. And uh, don't tell anybody though. But but uh, but but you know it's all a number. It doesn't even mean anything if you don't think about it. I mean, you start thinking about it, you're going, "Holy mackerel!" When I was 18, I met somebody 68. I thought they were, you know, Methuselah on steroids. And and uh, but but you know, it's crazy the way we're taught nowadays. They don't, think, you know, used to the elders, the seniors were the ones that led. The town. They're the ones that led the family. Now, uh, set your mind on things, Colossians 3 2, on things above and not on the things of this earth. A higher consciousness, it says in Revelation, that the angel talking to John, come up here. He was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. John, the angel called him out. He had to come out of the Spirit and come up here. So he wasn't high enough already? I mean, you know, you ever look at things like that? We were talking about John 3 today. It says, you must be born again, born of spirit, to see the kingdom of God. How many out there see the kingdom of God? Are you born again? Everybody talks about you say the prayer, you're born again. You see the kingdom of God. Most people don't even know where the kingdom of God is. You say, where's heaven? They point up. Well, if the kingdom of God is within you, where's heaven? Is heaven part of the kingdom of God? You can ask questions. We do all the time. Of course, we're... <laughs> It, we talk to each other. How, how many people talk, uh, even carry on a conversation really about God? About, they, about they, God. they get offended if you talk about God. Nobody wants to talk about God because he's not, that's not his name. His name is Yahweh, yod heh bah El Elyon, Elohim. The only real name that he gave you himself is I Am. So every time you say I am whole, I am healed, my youth is renewed like the eagles, I am young again. Every time you say that, my blood and my blood vessels are flowing like mamas. Anyway, good. That's exciting. <laughs> Just decree and declare your world, the goodness in it, that God said, out of your mouth, let that word that he gives you be directed over, the, over and into every vibration in this world, every frequency in this world. Let it go forth and bring change amen and be grateful for what you have and thank him that he has made you perfectly and we just thank you father god we bless these people open their eyes of their understanding open their hearts in the, in the name of the lord yeshua hamashiach the christ we thank you father god 
for revelation and illumination going forth today that they rise up and they desire to come inside and seek the things that God has given them.